In the world of smart products, video doorbells are one of the most complicated devices. Product offerings are really diverse and features are not standardized. Plus you might not know it, but when you buy one of these, you're often being forced into buying other smart products from the same company. So today I'm gonna to compare four of the top options, but I'm also gonna arm you with tons of knowledge so that no matter which video doorbell you're looking at today, you're gonna to be able to make a great decision. Here are the four doorbells. This is the Akara G4 video doorbell. It's brand new and it's priced at $119 US. It features a nice big doorbell button on a fairly wide frame. The button has some ambient lighting and it comes with its own chime that doubles as local video storage. It detects motion through its onboard PIR sensor and detects faces through its camera and onboard local processing. It works with any smart speaker on the market today and is the first Apple HomeKit secure video doorbell that's also battery powered. It's highly customizable because not only is it battery powered, but it can be wired in. Plus it could record to the cloud or to the SD card on the Chime. It's also able to record based on events or if you wire it in, you can record 24 seven to the SD card. The automation options are second to none and it's setting screens make it one of the most customizable options we're gonna talk about today. But this is a brand new product and there are a few ways that a more mature option like our Next video doorbell can still beat it. Here is Google's Nest video doorbell. Now the version I'm gonna show you today is the battery version, but Google sells the new wired version too. Google's products cost $180 US. They are fairly long and fairly slender and blend in really well with most homes. When the doorbell is rung, you can answer on either a Google Nest or an Amazon Echo Show smart display. And I will show you how Apple integration is possible today. The three to four aspect ratio is unique and the footage looks amazing, but Google's real power comes from their detection and recording options as they have the most sophisticated and detailed detection system available today. However, you could find yourself with a subscription and the local recording options just don't exist. This is the blank video doorbell from Amazon. It was released late in 2022 and Amazon tells you you can buy this for just $60. But I won't be reviewing this without a sync module because the doorbell just doesn't do anything worth talking about without it. The sync module allows for local recordings to a flash drive and helps with battery life, plus assists with communication. The doorbell itself is the smallest in today's review and it uses just two AA batteries or it can be wired into your home. It works exclusively with Amazon's voice assistant and speakers, but features an option to use the Blink mini camera as a chime too. And finally, here is the Ring Video Doorbell 4 from Amazon. It's part of a larger series of video doorbells from Ring and we will discuss the different options for moving through the lineup, both up to the pro version or down to a previous generation. But this is the flagship at the moment and changes to this whole lineup are now iterative because it's the most mature offering today. It comes in at 220 US and it features a rechargeable battery, but still can be wired into your home's existing chime. If you wire it in, it'll trickle charge the battery as well. Now it features a removable and customizable front plate, but also requires the most screws into your home when installing. It pairs extremely well with Amazon speakers and smart displays, as well as Fire TVs. And it has a really powerful pre-roll feature that I find to be a difference maker. But in this case, you're gonna require a subscription to do anything of value with the Ring Video Doorbell. And its detection features plus its footage don't always match up with its price tag, which is what you're gonna see as we continue our review of these four smart doorbells. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my job on this channel is to help you save time with smart tech. So if you're into that idea, hit that subscribe button now. When I do these kinds of comparisons, I wanna make sure that you have all of the information 
but I don't think it's worth your time to tell you about minor specification nuances. So instead of doing that, I captured everything you're gonna need in a spreadsheet that's available as a free download off of my website. The link's below. A video doorbell really comes down to what it can detect and how it does that detection. Then when you take that a step further and you combine it with the footage quality and your options for answering the door, you'll find out just about everything you need to know. Now here are four diagrams that describe what each of these video doorbells can detect. I know that this is initially a very overwhelming set of charts, but just from a visual standpoint, you can see that some of these doorbells have a lot of detection options and some of them have very few. It's clear that Google leads here and we can see that both Akara and Ring have a few options. Finally, with Blink, what we end up with is a motion detector and a push button. But let's get into some of the details. Here's a table of the different detection methods that each doorbell has and my assessment of how accurate these systems are. Just so you understand how I came to these ratings, it was based on many hours of trying to trigger these cameras in all kinds of different situations. Every doorbell sat outside my home for at least three weeks, and then I did three days of highly intense testing with all four doorbells sitting outside my home at the same time. As soon as you see this chart, you should be able to eliminate some of these. If you want face detection, you're gonna need Akara or Google. Akara isn't quite as accurate as Google is, but surprisingly, both of these cameras are doing this detection on the device. If you want package detection, you're gonna need Ring or Google. And again, I'll tell you that Google's detection is heads and tails above their competitor. That's funny because Ring is owned by Amazon. But every one of these cameras has different settings that can change how and when an event is recognized and then when it's recorded. It's pretty tough to go through everything, but here are some of the big difference makers. Everything has a notification and an option to record or not to record. Scheduling can happen in terms of notifications and there is always a sensitivity setting. But where things start to get different is in privacy zones and zone detection options. Although Google doesn't have a privacy zone option on this, they have the most sophisticated detection zone system. They give you up to five different zones and you can determine what you want to detect in each zone. Now, Ring is highly simplistic as they give you three zones, but you're gonna detect everything within those zones, except packages where you can set up one zone. Blink's zone detection system is actually pretty good because you do this advanced mode where you get a really detailed on what's included and what isn't. And lastly, Akara doesn't have any detection zones at all, although they do have a privacy zone setting. This makes it hard to stop a car from recording if you want those motion detections. And it is because the PIR sensor on board that device is making those determinations. It gets triggered a lot, and even the steam coming from my home triggered motion detections initially. The good news is you can eliminate that with the depth of settings a car gives you. It's their lingering time setting that does the most here, and it's the only camera with that setting. But in the end, the detection game comes down to how much you can detect and how much you can filter out. The fact is, Google is the best at this, and all of the other cameras are playing for second. Google doesn't have the most detailed settings and options for managing this, but they did get this right, and I had this doorbell on the front of my home for over a year. And I can count on one hand how many times I noticed a mistake being made. The rest of these cameras showed me cars when they went by, although Ring became better and better at filtering those out. They showed me any animal. And again, Ring becomes better and better at filtering over time. So Google, Ring, Akara, and then Blink in that order when it comes to detections and management. I spent a lot of time analyzing the footage from these different cameras and there are a few differences that are really important. Let's start with a demo of how all of these sound when exposed to standard outdoor 
ambient noise. You can hear the noise cancellation is really effective with both Google and Ring, and to a lesser extent with Acara. Blink is pretty much just letting everything through though. And here's how the footage looks from each of these. We'll run through each camera in just a few seconds of each situation that we put them through. Now that you've seen and heard how these work, let's get more detailed. Here is the same scene playing out in the middle of the day. As we continue to loop these clips, one thing you'll notice is that they start at different points. Ring and Google can both do those preview clips. Now that's gonna take Google being wired in with the wired version, that's a big differentiator. Even though the footage isn't as good on Ring's camera when it's in this preview state, it still tells you the whole story of what happened. You can see that it shows where I came from, which gives you the whole story of an event. For this test, I had to set all of the settings to their highest sensitivity and their quickest response time so that I had the most opportunity to catch myself the furthest back. Google and Ring start their recordings first very consistently. Google also always gets the entire event in one clip, whereas all the rest of these cameras can start new clips, leaving jumps in coverage. However, these all have different viewpoints. Google's three to four aspect ratio is obviously very different, which I think is the one I would prefer for a video doorbell because of the ability to see most of my porch and see about eight inches away from my door frame. Now Ring has this huge fisheye effect and that gives it a very wide look and both Akara and Blink have fairly similar viewpoints. But let's walk through each camera and how it looks as we progress between daytime, daytime with the sun in the background, dusk, night with a porch light on, and finally in full night vision. Here is Blink, and I'm starting with this for a reason. It looks okay at first glance, but it's really bright and there's not much contrast in the scene. None of the colors are vivid, which might not seem like it matters, but it's indicative of what you're capturing. As we head through to dusk and into the evening, as far as I'm concerned, we might as well have nothing on our door. The detection was working fine and Blink is very good that way, but what am I recording here other than a blob moving around? Moving to Ring, you're gonna notice a lot of similarities. The colors aren't really popping and there's not a lot of contrast in the scene. It's definitely better than Blink and the clarity is better too. However, in low light situations or almost no light situations, again, I might as well have nothing if I'm trying to identify someone. The good news is both Ring and Blink can be used with motion detection automation in Amazon's app to light up your porch so you can still get good footage. Akara is a very interesting case study because when you look during the day, it feels dark initially, but when someone is close to the camera, you're gonna be clearly able to tell who they are. There's a funny thing that happens in the footage though, and although I couldn't get this information out of Akara directly, I think the encoding is causing a little blur in between frames. The funny thing is that you're still able to make out people's faces, 
much better than the previous two cameras. At dusk, the camera does all right, as long as there's lighting. But again, at night, there's just not much to look at here. So I would always have a Kara's camera with pretty good lighting, either above or in front of your subject, which you can do because of the automation options. Finally, we come to Google, who definitely had the best looking footage during the day. And to put it in perspective, when the sun was in the scene, somehow this camera still managed to keep the sky and the colors in check. It's easy to tell who's coming to your door and it's easy to tell how Google does all of their recognition really well. As you get to dusk where everything has struggled, just like a Cara, Google struggles when there's no light on the subject to actually make out who it is coming to your door. There is still pretty good detail, but you're gonna wanna have your door lit up if you can. There is an issue automating that through anything but Apple HomeKit though. However, this camera has the only usable night vision footage. And I think what you have to understand about all these cameras is that the sensor and the encoding of the video matters more than the resolution. And I think when other reviewers tell you that the better resolution is a big deal, it can be with the right combination of other hardware, but here Google proves that the sensor they've paired with this resolution provides everything you need. Now I did promise to talk about some of the other Ring doorbells and how they are different. The Ring Pro does increase the resolution and creates a square frame so you can see more of your porch. Going back in time, I can tell you that the older versions of Ring's doorbells don't quite look as good, but the difference isn't huge. Now I know how knowledgeable you guys are about these things. So I would love it if you would share some of your experiences with these doorbells or other ones down below. I'm sure you'll have a comment about that quality difference between versions. But the next thing we need to deal with is how the device performs when someone rings the doorbell. This is where the rubber hits the road because it's how your experience starts and how you can manage your home. All of the applications allow you to manage whether or not you get a notification, but in general, you'll get a notification and be able to tap into it to see and hear the person at your door. That notification comes in from Akara and Blink as a text box. Ring's rich notifications show a picture and Google provides a moving GIF-like picture on my Android phone. So if I was to rank these notifications, it would go in this order. Google, Ring, Blink, and Akara. However, if I talk about how fast those notifications come in, here's the new order. Blink, Akara, Ring, and then Google. It's exactly in reverse, but when the doorbell rings, you're getting a notification from every one of these doorbells and the little differential in time to notify you doesn't really matter. What does matter is what you can do when you see or don't see that notification. It's at that moment that you can begin to chat with the person on the other side of your doorbell. Here's what it sounds like on both sides of that conversation with each of these doorbells. This is what it'll sound like if someone's at your door with the Akara G4. Here's what it sounds like if someone's speaking through the doorbell. This is me speaking at a normal volume. And here's what it sounds like when you're trying to hear the sight of the doorbell. Here's what it sounds like to the other person when you're speaking through your phone. Here's what it'll sound like if you're answering the door from your phone. Here's how it's going to sound if you're speaking through your phone to the person who's rung your doorbell. Okay, so here's what it sounds like when you're outdoors and you're speaking through the camera. I think all of the doorbells sound really good on both sides of the conversation, but there's obviously a lot of noise with Blink. And if I had any complaint, it's that there were little jumps in audio with Blink and Ring, and a Cara could sound a little muffled at times. But you actually have more options when it comes to answering your doorbell. Here's a chart that shows how these doorbells perform when answering your door. Blink is really hard to use, but the best experience you'll have is through an Echo Show. Otherwise, the app has delays and you can't speak through a Fire TV. 
I found most people struggling to hear me when I spoke through the app and the delays made it hard to communicate well. Google and Ring do exactly what you think they should do. They have good audio and the response in the app to get to the feed is almost immediate. You can have good conversations with people at your door and the noise cancellation makes all of this go fairly well. Google has a bit of a leg up on Ring at the moment because you can use the Nest smart displays as well as the Echo Shows and Fire TVs, but Ring also has this really nice automated smart reply feature. Please leave the package outside. And while you can't fully customize that, there are some great options that just automatically come out of the speaker on the doorbell and will tell the person what you'd like them to do. That means you don't actually have to pick up the notification for your doorbell ringing in order to answer your door. And the only doorbell that does better than that is Akara. That's because the automations you could create could allow you to answer your doorbell exactly how you'd like to. If you've recognized someone at your door with the facial recognition, you could play a custom ringtone that you upload. That could be you saying hello to them, and you could run all kinds of automations at that point to give access to your home, or more. Now let me be clear, that's not necessarily a good idea, but the option is there. Now here's an automation that checks that it's me and plays a custom ringtone after 10 seconds. It also turns on a smart plug and opens up the curtains to prep the lighting in my home. What's amazing is how fast this runs, and that's because all of this work is being done inside of your home's network. It's not going to a cloud service. There's just a lot you can do here, and the only drawback of Akara in this situation is that you can't answer the door on the Nest smart displays. Although you do get a ringtone there and can run a Google routine. On that note, all of these doorbells have different integrations and different ways that they can work with other smart home systems. Here's another chart where you can see the automation options are huge with Akara and then relatively small with the others. If you're into Amazon and their routines, the speaker integration and the smart display integration on top of the different detection types with both blink and ring is really good. Google's motion detection trigger doesn't work there, so I wouldn't rely on that. If you're into Google speakers and smart displays, then both Akara and the Nest doorbells can start a routine, but the smart display integration of the Nest doorbell is really good for answering your door. You can bring Akara's feed up on the displays with a custom command in a routine though, so you could hear and see who is at the door, you just can't respond. If you're into Apple, the Akara G4 works great directly, and it's the only true wire-free HomeKit secure video doorbell on the market today. However, the Google Nest with the Starling Hub is a remarkable pairing as you get access to all kinds of automation options through all the detection settings that you've put in the Google Home app. So both are great options there, although you're gonna spend a lot with Google to get there. Ultimately, all of the options with Akara's app are the only true automation features, and none of these really work with any other hubs beyond Home Assistant. The one thing I will tell you is that the Ring video doorbell does still have integration with Samsung SmartThings, although I wouldn't rely on that over the long term. With each of these video doorbells, the storage of your videos becomes important and is often tied to a subscription. What you're gonna notice is that Amazon's offerings don't allow you to store anything on their cloud service without paying for it. You get a trial with both of these, but that's where it ends. Google gives you the last three hours of recordings and they don't limit how many or how much recording you've done during those three hours. That's included with the price you paid when you got the doorbell. Plus with Google, you can get 24 seven video recording, but we're gonna talk about those fees in a moment. It's pretty clear to me that Akara is the leader here. And even if that free cloud storage plan changes from seven days to three, it's still way more than anyone else is giving you. Also, the local storage is the best, as long as you wire it in. And even if you don't, you could still record to that SD card or in the future, NAS. But the long-term costs come in when we talk about those cloud storage fees. 
With Akara, I see no need to buy a subscription ever, and I would say the same thing with Blink. Use their local storage options and that will keep the device price tag cheap over the next three years. For Google, I don't find face detection all that useful because I can see who came to the door. But for that 24 seven video history, I could see that being useful for a lot of people. You just gotta watch which other Nest devices work with that because anything battery powered isn't gonna do 24 seven recording. For Ring, you pretty much need the $4 subscription for your doorbell and you can go to $10 if you have a bunch of Ring cameras. And I don't think that that's unreasonable at all. You just need to budget for that 100% with this. So with each of these doorbells and my recommended tier of subscription, this is what you're gonna end up paying after three years. You could see how those storage costs line up and really drive up your price. And although I think you can live without Google's Nest Aware entirely, because I have most of the time, most of you, I think, will want the 30-day storage in case you miss an event overnight. There are some accessories that you can purchase with all of these, but I have yet to find any of these to be really important. Angle mounts or wedge mounts could be important for you to get the right direction but I think for most of us, that's a small cost and something that can be added at any time. Now, the other thing that's important within this conversation is how you can actually access those events and the interfaces of those events. It's quite different between these four doorbells. Blink's interface is just a big list, and when you tap on it, it has to retrieve the footage, which takes a couple of seconds. And then you can download it, and that's about all you're going to get. Ring, Google, and Akara all have these sophisticated event tools, and I will tell you that Google's looks the most refined and the easiest to navigate to find specific events. You'll see this ability to scroll up through your days and you get this nice visual, which is actually hearkening back all the way to the Nest application. But both Ring and Akara have fairly easy ways to filter down to the type of event and to get to the recording you want. Then you can share and download all of these clips from these apps. If I'm sticking something on the front of my home, I want to know if it's going to last and if it's going to work every day. And there are some nuances here. Google's video doorbell, the battery version, turns off on me about three times a year because I live in Canada and it gets some kind of cold up here. The device just turns off and anything battery powered is going to have this opportunity because those batteries can drain down and they can actually be damaged depending on how the design was done. So Google just turns off and stops working for about five or six days a year. Akara and Blink showed that their batteries had become really low when it got down below minus 20 Celsius, but they continued to work and I would actually say that Blink just kind of kept going. Ring did not really run into a true frozen day in my home, but reports with that battery have always been that it, when it drains down fast, it's more about settings or connectivity not quite being right. I'm sure that we would get to a point with this where I'd have to remove the battery and take it indoors though. Now here are the IP ratings for these devices, and you can see that the big outlier is a Cara. The good news is their rating with water means it can still rain on the device, but don't throw a bucket of water at it. In general, I think any of these could sit on the front of your home with regular weather and work 99% of the days without fail. They all have relatively good connectivity, although you will find some more connectivity options with Ring and Google for five gigahertz. The fact is with good Wi-Fi, none of these are going to be problematic and I've never noticed a disconnection.
One of the things that's coming to smart homes is a standard called Matter. The first version of it has been released, but later this year we should see expansion of that standard to cover video doorbells and cameras in general. This is a promise and we always have to be careful with promises that you don't purchase based on them, but Acara has already stated that their doorbell will get matter. It tells me they're already ready, or at least as ready as you can be before the specification is finalized. No other company has talked about matter, and I'm not expecting it to come to these other doorbells. All right, I've given you all of the big aspects for these doorbells, and I'm gonna give you my final recommendation for which of these four I would be purchasing for my own home. For myself, I mostly want ease of use. I wanna create a few automations off of a video doorbell, and otherwise, I wanna know when I get packages and when someone arrives at my home. I want good footage of that, and I wanna be able to answer the doorbell reliably and have good communication. To me, Google's video doorbell still is the best at all of that, and I don't need to think about whether or not it's capturing the right events. I can manage notifications to get exactly the ones that I want, and I'm okay dealing with a few days of the year where it turns off because of that ruggedness discussion we had. But in second place is Acara because I can manage the settings down to a point where I'm only getting exactly the notifications that I'd like. The local recording options and the fact that I feel all of my data is more secure on this device within my home is very important. So that's my second choice. And right now I actually haven't decided which of the two of these I'll personally use going forward. The difference maker for me might just be the package detection because I receive a lot of packages. Now for any of you who are working with HomeKit, Acara is the clear choice to me and I wouldn't rely on the Starling hub with Nest here for the next five to 10 years. I just don't know if that's gonna continue to work or if that company would even exist. But if you're working with Amazon, it's hard to ignore the ring opportunity. And if you're gonna pick up a bunch of cameras and you wanna create your own home security system, but still have that monitoring option, then that's the path you wanna head down. I wouldn't pick up Blink's doorbell for many reasons, but the biggest is what I showed you with the footage because it's just not where it needs to be for a video doorbell. However, I can see this being a really good option if you're in an apartment because up close and in good light, it still looks pretty good. Now the links are all below for these. And again, if you need that spreadsheet that does all the comparison of specifications, that's in the links below too. And if you enjoyed this kind of a comparison, check out our other comparison reviews that are up on screen now, where we go through this kind of a detailed breakdown of smart home options. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.